In this episode, I forgot to film an intro, so I'm doing it now. We continue the teardown on a Jeep, 5.7 liter Hemi, and for the first time, I don't break anything. And broke the power steering cooler right there. Uh, no, no, that's not true. I break some stuff. If you have some ideas for titles of these videos, I'm all ears. Put them down in the comments, because I'm running out of ideas. Drilled out the rivets. Um, what's interesting is the fan looks like it's powered by the power steering pump, some kind of hydraulic pump. So uh, this power steering reservoir actually probably should stay here since there are lines on there that are that are uh, compression fit. This here can come off though. Little radiator hose right up there. So normally I don't like to be under here when I'm popping the hose off because I'm going to get a shower. But I cannot reach this from up on top. So, ugh, oh, that wasn't too bad. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So, I'll pull the radiator out. I'm not even sure if I'm at that point yet, but I'll uh, pull this out. Start yanking on it and figure out there'll be more stuff connected. But there's a pretty long bolt down in there. And I'm assuming there's another one over here somewhere. This is the actual air inlet for the engine. And you can kind of see it's up towards the top of the headlight. There's a shield over the front of it. There's air that goes in behind it. And it goes through this ductwork into the air box. So it, it's actually pretty well connected. It would take a lot to get water in there, but we got water in there. So there is the other bolt right there, right behind the air inlet, which was a little difficult to pull out. Now I am taking out these bolts here. And those are the ones on the front. I've got a lot of these connectors on here, these fittings. It looks like I can unscrew it from here, but this line actually pivots in there so i would guess there's probably some kind of tool i can get to disconnect these lines all right next broken part i got a fitting right here I'm trying to get the power steering cooler off i put a wrench on to loosen this and broke the power steering cooler right there just snapped it right off i was looking at this looking for a special tool and find out you pull this plastic piece off there's a clip that lives in here, pop this clip out, fitting comes right out. So down a power steering cooler. I've been fighting to get the radiator out for a while. This is the AC condenser. It would definitely be easier just to disconnect this, but once you disconnect this, we vent all the refrigerant in the atmosphere, which is not legal. Uh, and it means I gotta recover it and I gotta change a lot of other stuff too, and refill it which isn't cheap. So I've been trying to get this out by and leave the AC condenser in. But I've been fighting this. I just, just found out there is a hidden bolt way down in here. I don't even know if I can get my hand on it, but it's way down in here. There's a bracket with a hidden bolt in it that is difficult. I can just barely touch it. So that's what I'm fighting. And it's going from, of course, it's going from the inside out. So I got to get to it on this side, which I've got all these lines right around that same area. There's a plug down there too. And it looks like there's probably some kind of AC switch, probably some kind of high pressure switch or low pressure switch. So a lot of fun. All right, finally got the radiator out. This bolt right here was hanging me up for a while and I got coolant leaking on my foot. Now with that out of the way, we can start looking at all the accessories on the front here. Uh, AC condenser still in and I've got the compressor from the compressor those go to the got the expansion valve there um i got this line goes to the compressor so i got ac lines here that go everywhere i got ac lines down here which shouldn't be a problem i got ac lines down here or no those are i don't know what those are 
those might be transmission cooler lines right here so in the process of taking the belt off actually it's in the process of turning the motor over i noticed this pulley here was not turning and it is seized up this pulley here so that is a problem i'm not sure what that goes to it looks like it's right off the water pump um, but it is it is not moving but there's a belt tensioner it is about to fall off um, so even if what, what even if the off-roading trip didn't break this engine this stuff would have failed here pretty quick and that would have produced some issues anyway so i'm wondering what else what else i'm going to find alternator spins pretty good the engine spins pretty good uh compressor um, i think this is the water pump that spins pretty good so just some more uh, issues i've come across thank you phil for uh, suggesting one of these mats to lay on from harbor freight that has been great uh, i went and picked one up today and i've been using it so i appreciate the tip so what i had to do for the leak down test was i had to put a wrench on the crank with all the spark plugs out any kind of air pressure will want this want to make this engine turn I don't know exactly how I find top dead center, so I just turned it over by hand with my thumb on the hose until there was a psh, psh of the air. So then I knew that's a compression stroke, so both valves should be closed. I pressurized this to 60 pounds. Um, I have to keep the wrench on there to keep tension on the engine, otherwise once you apply pressure to it, this is gonna wanna turn. Uh, it turns over real easy, so. 60 pounds on the number one and we're at about 55 so mopar number z's as one two three four five six seven eight so we tested cylinder two four and now we're doing six so the number eight here i have spun this and spun it and spun it I'll try going around again but uh, I got no psh of air coming out of there. So that is probably a dead cylinder. All right, so this is how we know the cylinder's a top dead center. I'm gonna put my thumb over the hose that is connected to the cylinder. And as I turn the engine, you can feel pressure building up and it's still coming out. So that's probably right around top dead center right there. So just so you know, uh, I've got the air, the air pressures on. We'll turn it up, we'll crank it up to uh, oh, about 40 PSI. But you can hear it, you can hear the air escaping. That's it's not the cylinder number eight, or yeah, number eight is not at top dead center. And you can actually hear it in the intake. But I can turn this engine You can hear it even more through the intake. And when I tested this before, I could not get any air to come out. We might have a bent intake valve on this cylinder. But if you hear it, air escaping out of your oil fill hole, you know that's the bottom end. That's a ring or a piston or cylinder problem. So cylinder number eight, I've turned this engine over about four times now and there's definitely you can continually hear an air leak it sounds a uh, majority of the time it's coming out the intake so that would indicate uh probably a bent valve now we're on to the compression test we've got the compression tester hooked up all right dad turn it over for a couple minutes we're on cylinder number one or a couple seconds again another couple times okay that's good so that is at one what is that so those are those each of those lines each of these lines are five psi so we are at 160. cylinder number eight this is the one that we had uh we, we had zero uh leak down zero on the leak down okay go ahead and turn it over Yeah, no, no difference at all. That's zero. So here we are. We had the number eight, had zero compression. 
and I uh, had zero on the leak down. Had it wouldn't hold any pressure on the leak down, so he pulled the valve cover, hoping to find a broken something that would be holding the valve open. Um, the valve springs look good. Everything looks good so far. So we're gonna turn it over and uh, see if I can get the camera down in there. So we're gonna turn this over and see what we can see, but everything looks pretty good. It looks like it all should be working. Yep. Do it again. Yeah, okay. So we got our oil coming out. We got valves valving. The uh, rocker arms are rocking. Um, I checked the, I thought maybe maybe a rocker arm was bent, although that wouldn't cause a valve to hang open. Um, but no, rocker, everything's tight in here. So I think uh, we're gonna have to continue the tear down. Um, probably, probably work on the intake and all the stuff on the front next. So let's, that's where we're going next. Well, if you're interested in the final score on the cylinders, here you go. There's number one. I had, uh, so I pressurized everything to 60, leaked down to 52. And you can see all the way down the list, all the way down to number seven is a little suspect, but uh, there's definitely an issue with number eight. Um, based on what we found today, it sounds like I got a valve hanging open back here, which getting water in the cylinder, I don't know how that would cause a valve to hang open, but I don't know if you if you know how that's possible, put a comment down below. Uh, if there's anything else you'd like to see here, anything you want me to take apart, go slower, quicker, put it down in the comments. If you missed the last video, there'll be a link in the upper corner of what we did to start to take this engine apart. Or if you want to see what had happened when I destroyed the engine or broke it, it's over here. Although, I don't know. 